That's not like good morning. It's good to have you with us this morning. It's a very interesting subject. This week, a group of fathers marched on Downing Street to raise awareness of what's known as parental alienation. It is a term that is being increasingly used in family custody and separation cases and refers to when one parent attempts to turn the couple's child against the other parent. We're joined now by family law barrister Paula Rowe Adrian and also uh, from our London newsroom by the psychotherapist Charlotte Friedman. Good morning to both of you. Thank you very much for being with us. Parental alienation. Now we know in many divorce cases there is acrimony between um, the two separating parents. But what turns it from just being a little bit spiteful about the other parent to something much more serious? What we have is a situation where there is clearly something seriously wrong. And by seriously, I mean we are looking at damage being caused to the child of the family. And that damage can be emotional and exhibit itself emotionally with the child not wanting to go to school or uh, conveying themselves in a distressing manner when they are with the other parent. I don't want to see you, mummy or daddy. I don't want to be with you but giving no explanation or reason why, or even where the child is making very serious allegations against the parent that they're not residing with, there's no foundation for those allegations. And you're increasingly seeing this used, are you, in family cases? Absolutely, sadly, but yes. Um, Charlotte Freeman, I wonder what the emotional impact of all of this is. We've clearly looked at some of the causes there, but what impact does this take? Uh, What toll does it take on a child? Well, it's a huge impact. It's an emotional childhood trauma because it's emotional abuse and actually what parental alienation is is very different from the type of thing that goes on when people normally separate which is about a bit of undermining or belittling of the other parent where parents jockey for position. Parental alienation is actually a, a psychological manipulation of a child without any justification with a view of excluding the other parent and creating unwarranted hostility or fear in the child against the other parent to create estrangement. And it's done by lying to the child about the other parent. And and Paula, listening to that and Mm. clearly seeing the harm that that can do to a child, how much weight does that then carry in court? It can carry significant weight. Um, And it's a real difficult problem for the judges to manage because there are occasions where a judge will feel that it's absolutely necessary to remove the child from the parent that they're living with who's causing that harm and place them with the with the parent who they haven't ordinarily How lived do you with. Prove it? That's what I don't understand. Well, it's really about investigating and it's across the board investigation by interviewing the parents by speaking to the child in obviously a child-focused fashion, by also addressing uh, other relative, um, relevant people in the child's life, for example, the school or social services, etc. Um, and there's an assessment also of the family, potentially, by a, psych- a psychiatrist, psychotherapist like, like Charlotte. Um, and so there, it's a long process, it's a long and drawn-out process, and it's a painful process. So I don't know, I mean, I know you're, you're not kind of so involved in the legal side of things, but we are going to see the introduction of these no-fault divorces, which is one effort to try and remove the antipathy from divorce cases. Do you think that that could help? I think it's a very good idea to have no-fault divorce. People don't divorce easily in any event. I think there's an idea that people just wake up one morning and think, oh, I'd like to have a divorce. It's not like that. There have been years or months of unhappiness and it's all thought out uh, before people say they want to divorce. To make the actual legal process easier and to stop pointing the finger at the other person and blaming makes the idea that you could have a more amiable, cooperative, collaborative divorce more likely. And of course that's going to help. But parental alienation, I think whether there's a no-fault divorce or there isn't, people who want to alienate their children will do so in any event. Paula, I mean, um, fathers' rights groups have been yes. campaigning about this for a long time, haven't yes. they? Um, but and what we've, so. Yeah, and what we've been hearing this morning certainly suggests that, yes, there is an issue there when it comes to gender, but this isn't all about gender, is it? This isn't all about gender. It's about broken hearts. Uh, and, I'm, uh, you know, that's what it's about. Um, and can I just say that 
if parties are finding themselves in this situation, parents find themselves in this situation, to please, please, please consider mediation. Um, the courts support mediation. They want you to try mediation. And the important thing that I want to try and get across to the viewers is mediation isn't a soft option. It's a real option recognised by the courts and ultimately is endorsed by the courts. And what it does, apart from offer you any other type of uh, speedy resource, costing you less money, etc., all those kind of things. What it does is it allows you to then move on, because once the process is finished, you can then start grieving the relationship in whatever way, and it allows the child to start grieving the process of what has happened and how they're going to move into the future. Um, wise words. Thank you for sharing all of that with us. Uh, really good to talk to you both, Paula and Charlotte. Thank you very much thank indeed. You. It's a really important issue and one, of course, that is getting so much more attention, mm. particularly as we heard that in the courts. I think it's time to take